We're just interrupting this episode to bring you news of an exciting new giveaway that we're running on Instagram. Click our Instagram link in the bio and in the month of October, November and December, we're gonna have separate giveaways. You won't want to miss this one. For the month of October, we're giving away a fantastic auto glim kit. Welcome to Bamford Rose and another question of the week. This week, the question is, can we run through the brake disc specifications for V8 Vantage? Talk about the pros and cons for each option and advise on cars that are perhaps not running the best spec, what the best evolution option is. Evolving the brakes of the standard V8 Vantage really does become important if you track day are heavily used the brakes on track and begin to encounter heat fade. For cars used on the road, even the original 4.3 brakes, the smaller four piston caliper, you have to be really on it to encounter fade, which then sort of detracts from your driving pleasure of the car. So just a quick recap on the history of the brake evolution on the V8 Vantage. When 4.3 was released in 2005, the front brakes were 355 millimeter single cast piece disc with a four piston caliper. That same assembly was used on initial 4.7, but was evolved at V8 Vantage S introduction to a two piece bell mounted disc, 380 millimeters with a six piston caliper. Partway through 2012 and certainly from 2013, 4.7s went to the larger disc, but instead of it being a two-piece bell-mounted disc, it was what's called a co-cast disc. It's a cost down of the Vantage S two-piece disc. We'll go into the details of the cost down later, but essentially it is a 380 millimeter disc with a six piston caliper. The later N430 and AMR derivative V8s use that same co-cast cost down disc, which is where this question stems from. You know, is that disc really a compromise compared to the Vantage S two-piece disc? Here's a pic of the Vantage S two-piece bell mounted disc with six piston caliper. The disc is floating, mounted on the pins. So when there's heat expansion, the disc can still center in the caliper. And the steel disc mounted to the bell, that gives great heat dissipation. With the standard factory pad, that's an awesome setup for the road. Where the previous 355 millimeter disc with a four piston caliper can suffer some heat fade on the road, it's very, very difficult to get any heat fade out of this Vantage S six piston, two piece bell mounted disc setup. On track with continuous heavy brake usage with the standard factory pad, you can suffer some heat fade, but a change to an RSL 29 and some Castrol SRF brake fluid overcomes that heat fade in most situations. The brake upgrade that we offer to 4.3 or 4.7 V8s with a smaller disc and a four piston caliper is exactly this Vantage S setup. And then if it is gonna be used on track, the RSL 29 pad, and then at service maybe flush and fill with the fully synthetic Castrol SRF brake fluid. Customers who use that setup arduously on a track day, I've not had anyone come back to me to say that they've suffered heat fade, which is detracting their drive. That was a phenomenal brake setup for a steel disc. It was slightly upsetting to see that changed. Here's a picture of what's called a co-cast disc. It's still a 380 millimeters diameter and still a six piston caliper, exactly the same caliper as on the Vantage S but the disc has changed from being two-piece to what is called co-cast. Technically, it's still a two-piece disc in that there are two different metals. Apparently, the outer rotor can expand through heat on the mounting hooks, but heat management is not the same because on this co-cast disc, it is possible to encounter heat fade. Despite hiding behind the wonders of the technology of the co-cast disc, inevitably this was done primarily for cost saving. In after sales, the 
two-piece Vantage-esque bell-mounted disc retails for approximately £850 plus VAT per disc, whereas the CodeCast disc retails for approximately £600 plus VAT per disc. Here's a picture from a 2018 Mercedes V8 Vantage, which has a two-piece bell-mounted disc. If the CodeCast disc technology was really that fab, heat management was as good as a two-piece bell-mounted disc. At the same time, its piece price compared to the two-piece disc was lower because there aren't all the fixings, the pins that are holding the two-piece disc together needed to be done during assembly and it was a casting. It means that if the co-cast disc ticks all the boxes, it's better than a two-piece disc they would have used it for Vantage S Mercedes, wouldn't they? And if you go over to Brembo's website where they list their technologies, a two-piece bell-mounted disc mounted with pins is their pinnacle. So if you have the CoCast disc, you only use the car on the road, that's probably gonna be perfectly okay for you. Track day use, that disc and that CoCast disc is certainly gonna suffer heat fade and degradation, accelerated wear. But the upgrade for that car fitted with those discs is really really easy because you can buy the more expensive Vantage-esque two-piece disc and retrofit that to your co-cast car. The pad is the same, the caliper is the same and the hub, the mounting, everything is the same so the two-piece disc can retrofit and you have an upgrade. If you're a 4.3 or early 4.7 with a four piston caliper and the 355 millimeter disc then the upgrade is to buy the Vantage S two-piece disc and with six piston caliper retrofit that to your car but that will need a new suspension upright because the bigger caliper uh, needs different mounting points on the upright. So the breaker upgrade on those cars is a pair of discs, a pair of calipers, a pair of wear lead sensors, a pair of suspension uprights. And for those of you already at Vantage S two-piece disc if you stick an RSL29 pad with Castrol SRF race fluid in then even if you stand on the anchors all day long uh, during a track day then you're unlikely to suffer brake fade. Rear discs and pads across all of those models from 4.3 V8 right up till AMR at the very end of V8 Vantage was all the same. And with how the brake bias is set up and the module has been calibrated, most of the braking is done on the front, meaning that it's completely pointless to upgrade brakes on the rear. And finally, it is just worth stressing that if you do have the CoCast disc and just use the car on the road, then that is gonna be absolutely fine, not gonna encounter any heat fade, heat distortion with that assembly on the road. For the GT8 and the AMR cars, Aston did miss a trick, really. On the AMR car, that CoCast disc should never have been fitted. They really should have done a ceramic brake option for that AMR, pushed that AMR car into being the real pinnacle of a swan song for that addition. Carbon ceramic brakes, electronic adaptive suspension. They could have done something where they sold the exhaust manifolds catalyst upgrade kit as a dealer fit and it was sort of sold through dealership maybe work service meaning that it was at arm's length from the factory so they sort of got away with it uh, from a vehicle certification point of view hope you like that question of the week and please find the link in the bio to jump across to our instagram page bamford rose limited where for the months of october november december we're running some exciting competitions